Hello and welcome to Riverside Cemetery. I'm your host, The Highway Ghost. I'm back in Asheville, North Carolina to film Riverside Cemetery's most famous and unique graves. The cemetery, right outside of downtown, has been here since 1885 and it's the final resting place of quite a few notable people, one including a local author slash poet, Mr. Thomas Wolfe. So let's take a cemetery safari. The cemetery gate has a really neat little plaque in memory of Thomas Wolfe. It says, when he came to the gate of the cemetery, he found it open, and as he approached the family plot, his pulse quickened. Now that was from Look Homeward Angel, his book. The first famous grave, and the most famous, is Thomas Wolfe. As you're coming in to the cemetery, you're going to see his grave on the right side. He's buried with his family. He's probably the most famous of all people buried here. His book, Look Homeward Angel, is quite famous. He died of tuberculosis in 1938. Son of W.O. and Julia Wolf, a beloved American author. The last voyage, the longest, the best. Death bent to touch his chosen son with mercy, love, and pity, and put the seal of honor on him when he died. Thomas Wolfe's father was actually a tombstone artist. It's kind of what he did for a living. People leave stuff. Leslie Wolf. There's several people buried here. It's really famous. Here's his father. He owned a tombstone company downtown. It was located, I think, in the basement of the Jackson building. And he actually put an angel up in that cemetery in Hendersonville. And it influenced his son to write a story. And sort of like a fictional story mixed with some truth how Thomas grew up in a boarding house with you know his mother running the business and stuff so that was sort of a little bit about his life but his house is available for tours downtown and I plan to do a video out there as well but yeah thank you for your work Thomas gone but not forgotten Sadly, this statue has been damaged by vandals. They've broke the head off and the hand, but this is from 1913. A beautiful statue. I really wish people would respect graves. Very cool. This is a more modern angel, but kind of neat either way. Out here, there's a a farewell handshake. That's very common from this time frame. This is from 1893. Beloved one, farewell. really symbolic if you look at it the the handshake and the curtains closed kind of like the show's over time to go this grave says coffin wow that's kind of cool wonder what the year is on that 
1906. Wow. Very cool. The Coffin family. Ever wonder what a groundhog's hole looks like? There it is. He's not home. He's out shopping. Okay. This one's gonna be kind of cool. There's an open crypt. Wow. Spooky time. Wow, check that out. Let's go inside. Wow, dude. I have to say that this is creepy and fascinating at the same time. And it also smells really weird. Must be leakage from the caskets. Yuck. Wow. If you look right up there, there's like a ton of crickets. I can't really find them. Wow, this is weird. It's very, very eerie. It smells like a cross between mildew, a musty basement, and roadkill. Honestly, it smells awful. And those crickets are everywhere. Interesting. Available for rent at Riverside Cemetery. Here's an interesting um, grave from 1901. It's got the cross on top of it. It's very common. I can barely see what that says, but here's a small crypt covered in ivy. It's almost like when we die, whether you're buried or cremated, either way, we all return to the earth from which we came. And nature takes us back. As you can see. And that ivy's covering it over. It's actually beautiful though. Oh wow, these are open. Dang, dude. It's like an open tomb. Nineteen twenty one there, and this one says eighteen ninety nine. It's kind of spooky in a way. Very cool though. I just hope nobody broke into that. Grave robbing around here is not too common, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. I've seen tombs that look like they were broke into in New Orleans and stuff like that, of course. That's a whole different story for another video. But I'm gonna show you the Buchanan Angel. This has been in books and is really famous. I did a small like short 
video here in the rain one day I kind of wanted to come back and do kind of like a better video but uh, Thomas Wolf's father installed this and it was said to have been imported from Italy but this was William Buchanan and his wife Sarah's grave and he died in looks like 1871 and then she passed away in 1913 but this is the Buchanan Angel It's got the the death wreath on the base. It has these little faces. It's almost like angels. There's more faces up top. Very beautiful. Very cool. You can see the mud wasp have built nests. Down here is another little angel. It's really cute. Kind of a creepy face, but we like creepy. What year does this say? Looks like it says maybe 1890. I can see that. Okay, this grave is quite interesting. I wanted to share it with you guys. This grave is from 1905. It looks like it says DR or Dr. Reed. Anyway, as you can see over here to the left, there's the Good Mason symbol of the compass and the square. But if you look over here, you're going to see a three piece link of chain. Now, if you're not familiar with this symbol in graves or secret societies, that's the symbol of the Odd Fellows, which is a similar society or club or whoever you talk to would tell you it's a secret society. From back in the day, it came over from the Old World, and they were similar to the Masons, and at one point in history, they were actually bigger than the Masons, according to what I've read. But this is means friendship, loyalty, trust. We are the Odd Fellows. And also, the Odd Fellows, another saying that they have is visit the sick, bury the dead, and educate the orphan. We are the Odd Fellows. This grave caught my eye. It's of a guy named George H. Kirk. He died in 1892 in Asheville, but he was a resident of New Orleans. Wow, sad, came up to the mountains and never left. Here's a Celtic knot, and this is very common in Old World Europe, UK, Scotland, Ireland. Very beautiful grave. Looks like it was installed maybe around 2005 or 11. It is a newer grave, but it's cool all the same very cool kind of a futuristic more modern grave of the Whitley family here's a Masonic grave it's got the compass in the square good Masons tell what year but has to be maybe early 1900s because I think 
think it said it was born in 1866. Interesting. Always thought Masonic graves were fascinating. All the symbols and the stuff in them. 1904 grave with a flower. Here's another one of the famous graves of Zebulon Vance. He died in 1894. He was in the Civil War. He was a state politician. And it says a hero among Masons. So he's quite famous. He was the man that they had the monument downtown that caused a stir and they finally removed it. But that was Zebulon Vance. There's some interesting graves. This grave here that says Lee has the notable marker star there. They're famous because they're related to General Robert E. Lee that was in the Civil War, the Confederate General. Stephen and Caroline Lee who died in the Southern Cause. That's what it says on the grave. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Another uh, notable grave here at Riverside and one of the hardest to find is the grave of James H. Posey. You can see it's marked with the American flag. But he was actually at one point in his career, he was the bodyguard to President Abraham Lincoln. And that's what he's most remembered by. And he's also, you know, a soldier because they have his military burial stone. And if you look here, you'll see these little silver kind of toned stars. Well, that's the notable graves within Riverside Cemetery. And the first time I tried to find Posey's grave, it was a cemetery safari. I tell you what, I walked these hills for hours. But I'm going to try to find as many famous graves today as I can to include in this video and anything unique in between. There's a lot to see. In a lot of cemeteries, you'll see these little lamb or sheep on gravestones. And usually that symbolized um, a child's grave, you know, one of the flock. But walking up from Posey's grave is another cool angel from 1914. Really cool. Very detailed. Here's the grave of Mr. George Mesa. If you've never heard of this man, then he's quite important in the United States National Park Service. George Mesa was a Japanese immigrant that came to America many, many years ago, and he photographed what would later become the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and he also helped to document stuff of the Appalachian Trail and even the little small town of Highlands, North Carolina. But he was a Japanese immigrant and he did nature photography. I guess you could say he was the Japanese version of Ansel Adams. There's a photograph of him doing his work. And he passed away and was buried in Asheville in 1933. And he's one of the notable graves. And I've actually looked for his grave for many years and I just saw it by accident today. So I guess it was meant to be. I'm actually going to do this in honor of him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a shot of my Canon camera sitting on his grave because he's awesome. All right, that one's for you, George.
This grave is from 1930 and it has the classic hand pointing to the sky, meaning they've gone home to heaven. We're back at the open crypt that we saw earlier with all the ivy. And I almost forgot to show you all, it's got an angel up top. I've walked by that several times and forgot that it was up there. How beautiful. This grave here from 1837 or 1887 must have been a sailor. Someone that loved the sea. Very cool. Anchors are quite popular on some graves. This is another notable grave, but I don't know who this is. William Randolph. Interesting. And down on the hillside, not far from the last location, there's this mass grave, as you can see, kind of bordered off there. But this is the grave of 18 German sailors who died in the United States Army Hospital in Asheville between the year 1918 and 1919. Not really sure what killed them. And I'm not really sure how they got to Asheville. That's kind of a mystery that I've never researched so far. But another one of the notable graves. The sound of crows echoing through the air on this cemetery safari. Which way do we go? Which way do we go? Here's a very interesting grave of an artist, Irene Dillingham Richards. See, there's paintbrushes. Almost looks like a person. Really cool. That's neat. Another grave that's notable here. A lot of people don't know this, but... This one right here, you can see it says Klingman. It's a man they named Klingman's Dome after. It's an overlook on the Smokies. T.L. Klingman. He was in the Confederate Army and a senator. In recent years, they've been wanting Klingman's Dome to be renamed something different because he was a Confederate veteran. At least that's what I read in, I think it was the Smoky Mountain News or one of the local newspapers. But he's one of the other famous people. This one's always been creepy because it's a headless child. This is the grave of B, L, and M, A Francis, their child that died 19. Oh, one. Wow. That is sad. And creepy. I think it's very disrespectful for people to tear up graves. I just don't get it. Well, I'm going to go try to find O. Henry's grave. He's another famous writer that's buried here. And there's some other people that 
they're quite famous. I'm going to try to locate the rest of them if I can. But this has been fun. It's a hot day. But I'm enjoying it. This section of Riverside Cemetery is the Jewish burials. And as you can see, there's stones laying upon the graves. Now, that's an old world custom that whenever you pass by the burial site of someone or some place that's notable, they would always lay a stone there, kind of like as a token of appreciation and remembrance. And you may see stones laying on graves or pennies. Pennies were used, you know, to pay the ferryman to take people's souls across the river Styx. It's an old tradition there. But this is a, a good example of a Jewish grave. It's got the Star of David on it. And there's a stone. But this is quite interesting. I try to visit as many different types of graves that I can around the country and parts of the world to kind of get a feel about, you know, how people, you know, differ in, in cultures. But we're all the same, all together as a human race. Very cool. Let's get the Hebrew. I can't read it, but I can look at it. Very cool. There's the draped urn. And an angel. Yeah, this is the Jewish people. Oh, this one's really neat looking. Check that out. Let's see what year this is from. Wow, doesn't really say. How odd. Never saw a grave that didn't have a name with the date or the birthday and the death day or whatever. It's just plain name. That's it. Wow. Cool. Very cool. I even found the Sandman. Now I got Metallica blasting in my head. <laughs> William Sidney Porter, O. Henry. Another famous writer that's buried here is O. Henry. It was his pen name, William Sidney Porter. He was most famous for writing the book, The Gift of the Magi. And as you can see, there's a lot of people that visit his grave. They leave the pennies, as I was talking about earlier. Died in 1910. Wow. Now they're one of the famous people buried here. It's kind of a unique little Mother Mary statue covered in some kind of plant growth this grave here is of James H. Marimon he died in 1921 and he is the guy that they named Marimon Avenue after here in Asheville so He's remembered as that, mostly. So much to see here. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the man they named Patton Avenue after in Asheville, because it does have the notable marker. And this is the grave of James W. Patton. He died in 1861. One thing I've learned about cemeteries and graveyards is if they have a big marker, that meant they were a big family. 
money wise fame wise because smaller paid people you know like the poorer communities they didn't have money to spend on headstones they had the smallest and best that they could afford it's another notable grave or two but I don't know who the Davidsons are there's a Morrison it's a Masonic grave from 1894 it's got the compass and the square and the hammer quite fascinating I always thought this grave was kind of unique because it says peace that's what the world needs is some peace there's a couple of deer statues out here by the road very cool as you can see this cemetery is really big there's a lot of people buried here there's a murder of crows sitting in the trees kind of just watching over the dead crows have always been associated with cemeteries and the afterlife being the old beliefs not just Native American but old world Europe beliefs that crows were messengers to the dead and I can see that because they're very mysterious birds they are very strange and they're very smart how many crows do you see dead and this is a classic cemetery uh, decorative on graves this is the draped urn the cloth of death this grave is from 1957 and it has the traditional flowers a lot of these tombstones I'd bet you money that Thomas Wolfe's father helped make these this grave here has the traditional scroll kind of like the book of life it's very symbolic it's got the flowers looks like it says oh man I don't know 1857 maybe or 87 quite old some other interesting headstones over this way very large tree I hate walking across graves because I feel like it's disrespectful so I try to kind of bounce around them but this is the draped urn with the eternal flame on top of it I can't really tell the year but I would guess it 1800s okay folks I'm really hope you've enjoyed watching my video here at Riverside Cemetery in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm your host, the Highway Ghost, and it's time to hit the road. So until next time, keep it creepy and strange travels.